brothers and sisters, Dominic Lucero here. I'm the instructor for Boilermakers Local Lodge 549 in Pittsburgh, California. So moving on in our trigonometry series for the job site, uh, I wanted to touch on something that I think is fairly important. Today we're going to talk about trigonometry and fleet angles off of tuggers. So we're going to go over this in depth, uh, but essentially what we're talking about is a tugger or a hoist, as most people would know it, um, the angle of the wire rope coming off the tugger, if it's not at a specific angle to the first snatch block that it's coming to, uh, we're gonna have a lot of problems as far as that wire rope actually spooling up on here. Uh, so I wanted to go over three different methods that we teach here in the apprenticeship program. And I wanted to talk about the usefulness of being able to find out these angles uh, with a degree of certainty. So I'm gonna hop on the computer and we'll take a look. Okay, so I hopped over to the CAD system uh, to make sure that we actually got this in reasonable proportion rather than the chalkboard that I'm usually working on. So here's what we're really taking a look at. Here is our tugger, and here's our line coming off the tugger to the first snatch block, and then it gets run wherever it needs to go at that point. Now this distance from right here to the tugger is extremely important because that is what dictates this angle coming off. And there's very specified angles for different types of tuggers or hoists. So there's different methods for being able to find this out. But what happens is if this angle coming off center line off to the side connected to the drum, if that is too large, we run into all kinds of problems. So Looking at this example right here, we have a four foot drum in width and the distance from that drum to the first snatch block is eight foot eight inches, which would leave us with a 13 degree fleet angle. And this is what is meant by fleet angle. Now, as it unspools or respools and that wire is going to travel over to the side, it's going to create this angle of 13. And the only reason why we don't consider it a complete included angle is because as that wire rope travels back to center, it's going to travel back to the other end and it's going to be the same exact angle. So really we are concerned with the angle coming off of center line. So we'll go over some of the rules for a smooth face drum. The maximum angle on the fleet angle is supposed to be one and a half degrees. So that is not supposed to vary more than one and a half degrees. For a grooved face drum, it's supposed to be two degrees of fleet angle coming off right here. So what happens if our fleet angle is not correct is the hoist drum will not spool up correctly. And this is a sectional view showing us a cutout of what it would look like for that wire rope rolling up on the drum. As you can see, if that angle is too large, the wire is not going to walk its way back across and properly spool. Now, if we look over here, this is what we're looking for. This would be proper spooling of either one and a half degrees or two degrees. And you can see that that wire rope is just going to sit in between each other one as it spools back up. Now, of course, this is just an example. So a couple of rules that I've come across in the course of teaching and instructing. Our LMS program tells us for a smooth face drum, the distance from your drum to your first sheave is supposed to be 20 times the drum width. And the most rigging module says that it's supposed to be 29 feet forward for every one inch or one foot off of center line. And then for the groove face drum, which can handle more of a fleet angle, it should be 10 times the drum width or the most rigging module. It should be 38 feet per foot of drum width off of center line. So if this is a two foot or a four foot length drum, it would just be off center line, 38 feet for every one foot. So that'd be 38 feet times two. Now these are really good rules of thumb. 
and you should follow them. I'm not here saying any one is worse than the other. Um, but knowing with a degree of certainty is always important. So I was actually pretty surprised when I came in here because this is to scale and accurate, which is why I wanted to do it on a CAD system. So here we're going to base this off the LMS program. For a groove face drum that is supposed to have two degrees of fleet angle, they told us to multiply the width of the drum by 10. So if we have a four foot drum, our first sheave block will come out 40 feet all the way down to make sure we maintain that angle. And what I found, because the CAD system's extremely accurate, is based on that measurement, it would give you a three degree fleet angle. Now, am I trying to split hairs? Not necessarily. Um, but as craftsmen who pride ourselves on doing the job right the first time, uh, that could be embarrassing, dangerous, time consuming, costly, what have you. So I personally would not go with the rule of thumb that uh, your distance to your first sheave is supposed to be 10 times the width of your drum. I don't think that would be very accurate. Now, the second example that the LMS system gave us is that for a smooth face drum that's supposed to have a one and a half degree fleet angle, it should be 20 times the, dr the drum width. So if we look here, we have a four foot um, drum and if we pull up our calculator, pretty simple uh, multiplication, four times 20 gives us 80 feet is supposed to be the next distance from our sheave. So as we can see, we have an 80 foot distance all the way to the first drum and the angle that gave us was one degree, which is good. So that's not a bad rule of thumb. Uh, if you're unsure, it's probably a, a good thing to give a, give a try. Now, I do like the most rigging modules example. It's a little bit more honed in, and I'll be able to show you exactly where they got these numbers from. So the most rigging modules rule of thumb is for a groove face that is supposed to have a two degree fleet angle. It should be your first sheave should be 29 feet away per one foot drum width to center line. So for every foot from center line, over here to the edge of the drum, it should be 29 feet away. So if we have a two, uh, a four foot drum, half of that on center line would be two foot. So very simple multiplication once again. So two times 29. So our first sheave should be 58 feet away to maintain proper spooling. And as you can see, we have 58 feet of distance to our first sheave. And the angle that gives us is two degrees. Spot on, that's exactly what we're looking for. And then for the smooth face drum, one and a half degree fleet angle, according to the most rigging modules, uh, our first sheave should be 38 feet away per one foot of drum width to the center line. From that, from this center line over to here, so of course, this is the same exact drum. It's a two foot distance from center over to edge. So 38 feet per one foot, we have two feet of distance. So 38 times two gives a 76 foot distance to our first sheave. As you can see, we have 76 feet all the way to that first sheave. And the angle we got here it's actually two degrees. So uh, plus or minus, I would actually trust this rule of thumb, but I'll show you why it comes out to two degrees. Chances are it was probably a little bit more about one and three quarter degree. Um, but where do they get these numbers from? 38 feet, 29 feet. Although I do believe that this is definitely the most accurate rule of thumb, there's a completely different way to figure this out using trigonometry. Because as you can see, we're dealing with angles and triangles. 
So if we have this distance, which would be our adjacent base, and we need to find out our opposite length on our leg, we can use the tangent function for that. So let's take a look. So if we're going to use trigonometry to figure this out, we are going to have to find the tangent of 88 multiplied by the base. Now, I know we need a two degree angle, so why are we looking for 88? That two degrees is going to be this angle up here on top. So that's not the angle we're trying to find right now. Instead, 180 degrees in every single triangle. We know that this is 90 degrees, so we have to have 90 more degrees. If we want two degrees here, that would leave us with 88 degrees right here. So if we find the tangent of 88 multiplied by two feet, that'll give us the distance. So let's see what we get. So we'll type in 88 tangent, and that gives us a number of 28.63. And once again, back to our original trigonometry videos, that is our ratio. For every one foot over, it goes 28.63 feet up. And as we could see from the most rigging modules, they told us that our ratio here is going to be 29 feet per one foot. That's where that number comes from. That number of 29 is based off of the ratio of the tangent. So if we take 28.63 and we now multiply that by 2, which is our distance from center line to edge, it gives us... 57.27 feet, so just about 57 and a quarter of a foot, just a, a little bit over, which a quarter of a foot is going to be three inches because three times four gives us one full foot. So if you want to know the exact number, we could take this number, 2.72, and we can multiply that by 12. which will give us 3.264, and we know a quarter inch is 0.25, so three and a quarter inches. And that gives us exactly a two degree fleet angle from the drum to the first sheave. And why this is important is you might be cutting it close. Uh, a lot of the tuggers that I've worked on have been at the top of the unit, and sometimes there's not a whole lot of headroom. So if we're going to be cutting it close, I want to know for a fact the distance away from my drum to that first sheave to be able to maintain that angle so nothing gets messed up and there's no rework because the most expensive work is rework. Let's do one more here. So for a smooth face drum, it can't handle as much of a fleet angle. So based on the rules of trigonometry, we're going to be using the tangent of 88.5 because it's half a degree less. So one and a half degrees minus 90 is going to give us 88 and a half degrees multiplied by the base, which is two feet. So let's give that a try. So the tangent of 88 and a half equals 38.188. And if you remember, in our last example, they told us that we are supposed to go 38 feet per one foot. That's where that number comes from. That's our ratio. It comes from the tangent of 88 degrees or 88 and a half. And that is why you see this 0 0.188. That is 18 percent, almost 19 percent of a foot. That little difference it's enough to change this angle to two degrees rather than one and a half. Is it a massive difference? Um, it depends on what your quality of craftsmanship is. I like doing it right. And if it tells me one and a half degrees, it doesn't mean two and a half. It doesn't mean three quarters. It means one and a half degrees. So now all we have to do is we have to multiply that by two. It gives us 76.376, so hold on to that 76 in your head, 
Let's find out what 37.6% of a foot is. So 0.376 multiplied by 12. About four and a half or four and a half inches. And if we look here, 76 foot four and a half inches would be the distance to our first sheave to maintain that one and a half degree angle on there. So if we're trying to look really 38.188 is the number that they gave us. Now in the most rigging modules, it tells us 38 feet for every one foot. Let's see what 0.188 of a foot is. 0.188 multiplied by 12. So it's actually two and a quarter inches. So that two and a quarter inches over a 76 foot span can actually make a big difference. So I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. I just like to know for a level of certainty that I'm doing my job correctly. So if you're ever in the position that you are not quite sure about your fleet angle, you can use the tangent of 88 or 88.5 multiplied by the base and that will give you the distance away your first sheave should be. All right, brothers and sisters, I hope that was helpful. Really with this craft, a good education, uh, some simple rules and, and principles that you keep in your back pocket, a good attitude and safety will take you a long, long way in this career. You will have a good time. You'll make some friendships that you'll have for the rest of your life and you'll have a comfortable lifestyle. So if you ever need any help, please come down here to the training center. Happy to sit down with you at any time. I hope you get the education you deserve.